I'm Mark Callan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. At this point in the Hydro Series, I've set up my Hydros X4, I've set up the XP8, which is the bank of controllable outlets, but I haven't configured any of the outlets on the XP8 just yet. Now that's what I'm going to do in this video, but first a word about controllers and aquarium monitors. I'm a big fan of aquarium controllers, and at the very least, I think any aquarium, freshwater or saltwater, needs some kind of monitoring device on the tank. That way you can get alerts of temperature on a range or water on floor. Even if it's a small freshwater tank, even a small saltwater tank, put some kind of monitoring device so that you can be alerted if something's going wrong with your tank. If you know something's going wrong, you can react and you can save what you've worked so hard to build. Now the Hydros X4 can certainly get that job done. If you're looking for something more entry level, the Hydros X2 like Jimmy has in his part of the series is a great entry level monitor that can then expand out to be a controller. So if you do nothing else, get yourself some kind of monitor on your tank so that you can be alerted if something goes wrong with your tank. Okay, that out of the way. My X4 and my XP8 at this point are really just a monitor because I haven't configured any kind of outlets on the XP8. But that's what I'm gonna do in this video because if I just did a monitoring device with these two pieces of Hydro's gear, it'd be a huge waste. I'm vastly underutilizing it. It's time to jump in and start to see what this thing can really do. All right, first thing, I'm gonna open up the Hydro's app. See at the top where it says collective okay. If you don't know what a collective is, go back and watch my creating a collective video because this is super useful. This is a great way to have redundancy in your system. So Hydros 1 is the X4 and then the main XP8 because at some point I'm likely going to have more XP8s. Okay, so this just gives me a quick rundown of everything. Here's my temperature. Here's my pH. And then I'm going to go down here where it says outputs because I want to configure an output an outlet on the XP8. So add or edit output. This is a little different for me because I was expecting if I had an XP8 connected, I would just see some outlets, but nope, we have to name this. So let's do this a heater because at the very least your heater should be controlled by some kind of controller or monitoring device. And then here's where we jump into the wizards. What type of outlet are we configuring? They have all these wizards already built in from a chiller to calcium reactor, automatic water change, ATO, like fluorescent light, even down to a metal halide light. You got it. Okay, so we're gonna go into heater. Boom, we have all these things pre-configured. And let's say we wanna edit things. So it's gonna turn on at 77.5. It's gonna to default to turn off at 77.9. I like to do a one degree swing. So I'm just gonna to touch the little plus arrow here until I get to 78.5 or I can touch it and drag it however I want. I can even go in here and manually type it in to 78.5 and then it's saved. Okay, now temperature input. What is it monitoring to decide if it needs to turn on or off this heater? And I like this, it has a default built in if you wanna use a second temperature input. Great idea if you had two temperature probes you want to create some redundancy that's built into the wizard output device in this case my heater is going to be an outlet number two so that's what i'm turning on and off and then we even have a power safe range this is super cool for some reason this heater is drawing too much power the hydros is going to detect that so 1500 watts that's a big heater i'm going to turn this down let's say it's a 500 watt heater we'll give it a little headroom there power notification level how bad do you want to be notified if this power gets on a whack? To none, to yellow, to red, to orange. I talked about that on the setup video. If power gets on a whack, I want to know that. That's definitely a red. If output dependency unavailable. So what happens if the temperature probe is unavailable? What do you want it to do? Turn off. That's a great default setting. I love that it's built that way into the wizard. It's a fail safe. For some reason, the temperature probe or whatever probe you're monitoring to turn this outlet on and off, falls off, isn't available, it's gonna turn this outlet off and default. Active in modes, if you're in feed mode or water change mode or any other mode that you create, what do you want this heater to do? And then you have a dependency mode. If whatever outlet I'm saying if is off, then is it off, is it on, etc. So in my case, I'm saying if the return is off, then I want this thing to turn off. But let's say if your return was on, then you want it on. You could do that as well. In my case, if the return pump is off, I want to have this thing turn off automatically. 
You can make it invisible and then there's advanced settings. I'll get to that in a separate video. So all this is pre-configured. Let's run down again. Look, all this is built into a wizard. I have used no code and I have never seen this before. I'm just walking through this. Super simple to understand. Upload changes. It's going to then write it to the hydros, write it to the cloud. This takes just a second. Boom. And then I'm done. And I go back. There is my heater tile on the outputs. And then I can go back in here. I want to turn it off. Leave it on auto mode to turn it on. I can immediately get a status on the voltage, the current, how much power I'm using. All these type of things. You can do that. And then if you ever want to go back and configure it again, just hit this gear icon. And we'll go back into the wizard and you can change things. So... That's it. Super simple. Again, if you have a monitoring device, a controller, first thing I do is set up that heater because I want that thing to be absolutely be controlled by my controller in case something goes wrong. Okay, so let's do something different. Let's come in here. And so, what? you know what? Let's configure our protein skimmer. I'm just going to call it skimmer. Keep things simple. Create. What type of thing are you plugging into this outlet? In my case, it is a protein skimmer down here so it's a protein skimmer skimmer level sensor this has a default built in so if you had a level sensor in your skimmer cup such that if it got tripped then it would turn off your skimmer letting you know that the skimmer cup is full you could do that that's built in output device where is this skimmer plugged in in my case it's an outlet number three we can set up a power safe range again let's just turn this way down because skimmers usually don't use much power what kind of notification to the level do I want to get if the power is out of whack? Let's go with orange. It's not the end of the world. I'm going to ignore if the input dependency is unavailable part because in this case, I don't have a level sensor inside of my skimmer cup. But again, I like that the default is turned off. What modes do you want this active in? Well, water change. We're definitely going to turn that off. Feeding probably as well because usually when you feed, you turn off your return pump. So if you hit a, a feed mode, then you're going to want to turn that off because more water is going to come into your sump and could cause your skimmer to overflow. Depends on. Okay, again, we're going to go back here and say, look, if the return pump is off, then I want this skimmer outlet to turn off. You can change this to if it's on, if it's off, if it's on. You have different options, but in my case, the return pump is off. I want the skimmer off because if the return pump is off, water is flowing back into the sump where for a lot of you, that's where your skimmer is. Water level rises and cause your skimmer to overflow. Done, upload, let this go, and I've set up my skimmer outlet. I was expecting some amount of struggle setting up and configuring the outlets on the XP8 because I'm used to a different controller that is a completely different approach to outlet setup and configuration. But it was super simple on the Hydros. I'm pleasantly surprised. And I didn't have to know any kind of coding. I didn't have to write a single line of code because of the wizards that are built into the Hydros. So what you've seen is a basic outlet setup. And for a lot of you watching, it's gonna get the job done just fine. But I wanna jump in super deep, really dive into the outlet setup to see just how much I can make this Hydros do. Cause I'm more of an advanced user. I really wanna dig into this thing, make it do a com some complex stuff. So that's what I'm gonna do in the next video. I'm Mark Callan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Till next time, enjoy your tanks. I'm gonna go jump into the Hydros some more. Thank you.